In the last tutorial, we spent about five minutes just plotting three points, weight and heights, on a graph, and we decided to figure out what the best linear model or straight line fit would be to go through those three points as close as possible while minimizing the error. And the error is the, the difference between the, the point on the line itself and the point itself. Let's backtrack and just rerun all of this code here. So we created the data frame with our data points. We loaded the library, ggplot2, and then we went ahead and plotted it with the confidence interval and the actual, the line, the blue, that goes through um, the points as best as possible, right? So let me zoom in on that real quick for you. And what I wanna show you today is how to get the equation of this line. Now, when we get to models that are more complicated, we're not gonna do this. Think about it, um, as we get some very sophisticated models in the future, we're gonna have tens of thousands of variables. Right now, we have basically one variable. We have the weight. Depends on the weight, what's the height, right? Easily done by a human by hand. But I just wanna give you the confidence that this is actually predicting the correct line by recreating the line itself. So let's go ahead and let me zoom back out of this. Oh, before I do that, before I do that, let me show you uh, one thing that we have to fix. This blue line, as you see, it goes all the way across. If you look at the X scale, you'll see that the scale doesn't actually go to zero and I kind of need that for my example. I want it to go from zero to some number, maybe 225, zero to 225, right? So between 100 and 125, that's only a 25 unit difference, right? You can definitely tell that to the left of that 100, I don't have four 25 units to get down to zero. So we've got to fix that. Let me show you how to do that real quick first and then we'll go from there. All right, so in our GG plot, we've set up all of the parameters that we need, except for one thing. Let's set some limits for our x-axis. So x lim, and we put that in parentheses, and we say, hey, give me a vector or atomic vector of numbers to show you start to finish. I want to start at zero. Yeah, zero sounds good. And we'll finish at 225. So now let's rerun this, and you will see, and it's changed. Let me zoom in for you on that. Now you see if I finish this line, if I kept on going straight, it's going to keep going, keep going, keep going, and it kind of maybe hits, I don't know, somewhere around here is my guess, but I don't know. We're about to figure that out. We're gonna extend that line is what we'll do. All right, well, I'm not gonna extend it on the code yet. We're just gonna do it manually. So I wanted to show you that, just so you don't get confused with this next step. All right, so we wanna find the coefficients of that of that equate of that line. So to do that, it's very simple. First, let's create a model. We'll say, hey, this model one, because we might do multiple models. Maybe there's 10 models. We want to see which one best predicts the data. Remember, this was a linear model, but we didn't actually capture what the linear model was. We just piped it into the ggplot. So let's go ahead and just do a linear model. And we're going to say, what do I want in it? I want my x data, my example data. I want the response variable to be weight, right? Uh, I, I want to predict the weight based on the height. Oh, no, no, no. Let's go the other way. I want to predict the height based on the weight. So I will do a tilde and do the same thing. X data dollar sign weight. I don't know why it's trying to auto-populate all those other numbers, but we don't need those. Okay, so we have uh, the tilde thing, which is new for you guys probably. All it's saying is it's just more syntax. It's saying, hey, here's the predictor variable based on the weight. I'm, I'm going to say... I, I give you the weight, tell me what the response is. You know, if I have 100 pounds, what's my height? If I have 200 pounds, what's my height? That's all that means, just get used to that. So do a command enter on that. And now you have the model saved as model one. And all we're gonna do next is find the coefficients. Coefficient of model one. And it's gonna tell us down here below. We have an intercept of 24 and a weight of point. It's not a weight, it's it's kind of a bad choice of, of um, uh, variables, but the the x data weight, weight, so it's weight, weight, is 0.24. In other words, every time you have some sort of weight, multiply it by 0.24. That's our slope, that's our slope. And I'll show you how that works in just a moment. So let me switch to my my other camera. Let's move this aside and let's do a little bit of manual calculations just to get this through to you. Okay, so we said that the intercept was 24. So 
the intercept is also where it intercepts on the, yeah, where it is, intercepts the vertical axis. So if this is weight and this is height, I'm just gonna abbreviate with H, when the weight is zero down here, when the weight is zero, I know that it's gonna cross because R is telling me it's gonna cross 24. I know there's a point right here on that line, mostly because it was given to us. It said the intercept, so the intercept was equal to 24, and it said that the, it didn't explicitly say the slope, but the M is 0.24. The slope is actually, it's, it's a weighted amount that you multiply the weight by to get the actual height plus the intercept. Let me show you a better example. The old equation that we all probably don't remember anymore is y equals mx plus b. Remember, the b is the intercept. That, that 24 is that b. The b is where it crosses the vertical axis. And the m is the slope of our predictor variable. So this x is not really an x. That's the weight. This y is not really the y. That's the height. So we can change that to a more height equals some sort of slope times the weight, I'll just do W, plus some intercept, which we know is 24, right? So the intercept is 24. Height equals some slope times the weight. But that slope, you don't really have to think about it as a slope. Think about it as a weighted, a weighted parameter, right? So it's not M. We know it's not M because it's telling us based on the R that it's 0.24. It's 0.24 times the actual weight. Now, using the word weight is kind of uh, hard because you can also count this 0.24 as a weight. I'm weighting this other variable, w, by 0.24. So that's a little confusing. And I know it's hard to see that. Um, so let me, let's just plot one more point. If I, we know this one here because if I plug in zero for weight and I multiply zero by 0.24, you still get zero. And zero plus 24 is 24. So again, if the weight is zero, bring it all the way over right here. I plug in zero, zero times 0.24, plus 24 is equal to 24. So the height is 24. Does not make sense, right? Because it's just a model, it's not real life. So this is some of the things we'll have to fix in the future. Now let's pick an arbitrary, another one. Let's pick, um, well, 100. We know that at 100, wherever that might be, that if we plugged in 100 for weight, and this is just an approximate, I'm gonna say that's 0.25, so a quarter. So 100 times 0.24 is approximately 25. 25 plus 24 is, you know, 49. So when the weight is 100, you go up to about double this, right? So there's another line or another point, and there's our line for our actual model. Those aren't the real points. We know, we know that when the weight is 100, um, that the height is 45 because it's in our data. But that doesn't matter. It's whatever's on this actual line right here that matters. Hope that kind of makes sense to you guys. So we created the line. Let's go back to our plot and just double check that it all makes sense. So we have right here, if this blue line goes all the way down, if you kept on going, it kept on going. I mean, I'm kind of bad at judging where that goes, but it's probably somewhere around here, right? which would be under the 25 mark, so maybe 24, right? That's exactly where we just did it on paper. And at 100, you can see that the line itself is at 49, right? And the actual dot, if you go back to our uh, data, the actual dot, if you look up here, is at 45. So when it's 100, it's 45. So I was a little off because I didn't multiply by 0.24 and because it's not truly gonna c contain those data points. It is the best fit line that minimizes the error between that line and the data point.